Hey guys, Leash, and welcome to another episode of Car Confessions. Now, listen here, guys. I am actually recording Wednesday morning. Uh, normally, I record Wednesday afternoon. Okay, what's happening here? What is, you know, people here in New York, the driving is, it's beyond me. Like, I just don't even understand what people are thinking. Like, this guy was literally on the side of the road, like, right next to me on my right-hand side, just sitting there, and then just decides to merge right in front of me. No um, signal, right? Like, nothing. Just, I'm just getting in front of you and, you know, deal with it. Whatever. Anyway, we're safe, and that's a blessing. Oh, listen, this scarf, I love the scarf, but it always gets my earrings stuck. Like, it just it never fails. Nevertheless, here we are. It is, like I guess it's uh, Wednesday, April the 17th, and it is a good day. I'm excited for all the things that are to come today, whatever that is, right? And I'm like, I'm finding that, like, I'm not finding, but for the past few years, past few years, I can't talk. The past few years, I have been, I still sound crazy, don't I? Anyway, morning, I guess my mouth is still getting used to talking. But um, the past few years, um, I have been waking up every morning and you know, obviously praying. Um, and I normally pray every morning anyway, but more so now it is really to give thanks for a new day, a new beginning, new ideas, new choices, new start to the day and to always ask, or not ask, but just say, you know, I'm here for service, right? Use me in the way that is, you know, needed today to be a blessing, not a burden, all those things, right? And that has been my you know, prayer for the past few years to be, to be used as, um, a servant to those that are in need, um, to be a blessing, to not be a burden to anyone, to not cause any harm. Um, yeah, that's been my thing. And to be a light to those uh, around me and even to myself to be a shining light in the midst of all of the darkness and it's wild and I, I, don't, I don't know if I had shared this with you guys before but what I realized and I've seen this information too like um, shared like on different social media platforms and stuff like this but it's like when you are asking to be that type of servant where you are shedding light into the world, where you are um, being that beacon of hope uh, to some degree, right? To be a word of it, to be someone that's encouraging, um, to bring hope. I can't be the hope, right? That's within us. Like we have to, someone can spark it, like kind of like a coach or something like that, but it's within you. So I'm not the beacon. I'm not the hope. I am someone who can help you ignite hope in your world just want to clear that up but also be someone that has that sense of light um and to share the light and to let you know that there is light within you all that to say learning all that and realizing all that and experiencing this task in life um when it comes to you know being someone who is um someone who is bringing light to the world you realize how much darkness is out there, right? And when you see that, or when I, I'll, I'll talk for me, for Leash, experiencing that, it is sometimes so hard because when you aren't someone who is constantly living in dark darkness or in that type of world and to be exposed to it 
you know, nonstop to bring light to those that are in darkness or that are experiencing, you know, sadness, tragedy, things of that nature. And let's be, I want to be clear. Yes, I experience sadness. I experience, I, I'm a human. Like, let's be, like, come on. Um, I have chosen over the years to be a bit, you know, to, to, to seek out the good to really work on focusing on light and love um, and trying not to sit in darkness. Um, but, you know, there's that. But the idea around that exposure of darkness, it is intense. And, you know, when when you are in positions to be someone who is, you know, experiencing a lot of darkness or, you know, helping people through, like, understanding that they don't have to live in that, it can really take a toll on you. And for some people, and I don't want to diminish people's experiences and situations because everybody's situation and circumstance is different. There's nothing general about this, right? But for those who are in those spaces that are coming out of it, you know, it's like, wow, I didn't realize how dark that was. I didn't realize how um, ingrained that type of mentality was within me, right? It was just kind of like a part of me. Um, and it's wild to see people come out of that. But it's also a, a, a learning lesson. And also, yeah, it's a learning lesson for those who are in the position where they want to be someone who helps people to see the light um, in the midst of darkness. It's a learning lesson for people like myself to actually step away. Because we want to help, we want to help, we want to help. Because we know what it looks like on the other side, you know. And there's a balance with that, right? Understanding, one, because there's so many layers to being someone that lives or does their best to live in light and wants to share that with others, knowing a few things, right? Knowing one, that not everyone is going to be willing to live in light because the routine and the habits of living in darkness are so familiar that some people just don't want to come out of it. And it's important to know that all you can do is be, you know, someone who provides that resource. And then it's the job of that person to then take on those resources and make them work for themselves. Like you cannot be the person that carries them through the whole rigmarole of trying to seek out the light. Um, because then you have depleted yourself in probably various ways um, as you're trying to do that, you know? And it's it's crazy because I'm dealing with things that are, you know, in my life that are, you know, hmm, that are, that, that are where I'm, I'm in, in a way of helping people with this. But at the same time, I have to learn and know that I can only provide the resources and not try to be the one to push them through this whole thing. Like I can say, hey, here's this, here's that, you know, words of encouragement kind of thing, but not create some type of codependent relationship around the situation. And that used to be my MO. My MO was to be you know, or create codependent relationships because that's how I grew up. I mean, for you guys who've been listening to the car confessions for a while, you know, it was like a year or two ago, I was talking about codependency and how I grew up in a codependent household. And when you grow up in that type of world, it can be really, um, how would I say this? It, it it can create a sense of oh my goodness, I am 
you know, a good person. I am helping. I am doing all the things that are necessary to be a quote unquote good person. Even though you're overextending yourself, half the time you're pissed about stuff that you have to do, but you feel like you're doing your due diligence to society and humanity and maybe your family, whatever, to overextend yourself, to put yourself in situations that just aren't healthy for you, um, all in the name of being this good person and being a helper and whatever else. Um, and that's why I have to constantly bring myself back into this idea of, okay, if I'm going to be someone who is a person that lives in light and wants to show people that I can't fall back into my codependent ways because it's so easy, right? So easy. And, you know, also growing up religious, right? I did. I grew up, you know, in the church, and that was something that was also a part of the the religious practice, was creating these codependent relationships, uh, and I'm not saying every religion's like this, so please, 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 <laughs> don't, don't come for me on that, but the situation that I grew up in, it it did um, involve codependent relationships uh, in the religion that I grew up in. I grew up Seventh-day Adventist. I'm not saying all Seventh-day Adventists are codependent either. Please, please, please. But just the way I grew up, and I know a lot of that had to do with my upbringing because that's just the way things were um, growing up. Um, And let's be clear, like, those relationships – in terms of codependency, were created around a sense of just trying to do what was right. And the people that I learned these things from, they were just also trying to do what was right, right? Um, But it doesn't take away from the fact that I'm now unlearning, right, all the things uh, as it relates to codependency and trying to, you know, just gauge what's the best you know, what's best for me and what's best for the other person um what i most best for the other person because i really can't control that that's another thing i had to learn boom right realizing that certain things that are sitting well with us or whatever that is whatever is happening um as it relates to us interacting with other people or confronting other people about certain things or whatever that looks like I am not responsible for how they react. I can't do anything about, you know, how they respond to things. I can only control myself. And I know a lot of us are like on that journey of realizing that too, uh, that we can't control people. As, as much as I would love to just have the reins on everything, I don't. I don't have the control of, you know, basically manipulating people into doing what I want to do. I can share what is, what works for me. If it works for them, great. If it doesn't, then, you know, maybe we can come to some type of compromise or whatever, you know, but I can't control how other people respond or how they deal with everyday situations. Um, But all that to say, it has been a really wild journey. Just, learning how to navigate this whole idea around living in light and not creating some type of savior complex. Like I said, not creating codependent relationships, not, you know, causing any harm. Because I think too, a lot of people that do this work that are like healers, that are coaches, that are um, motivational speakers, whatever, right, that whole world, Um, and I see myself in that world to some degree, I think some people that are in that world can create um, a sense of harm as it relates to guilt, right, because we can give all the information, right, and share, like, oh, 
this is what's happening with da 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 and it's like say this is what's happening in your life like you're dealing with anxiety or whatever and it's due to you doing all blah 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 you shouldn't be doing like and just trying to create like a narrative around an idea of they're not doing the right things but here i am i'm here to help you thank god i'm here um and so that creates that basically that codependent type of reality for someone you know um where they feel like they have to rely on you because you're the only person yo these roads guys seriously it's ridiculous um but yeah it, it gives people this idea like you're the only person that can help solve their problems and thank god you're there um but then like where does that leave the person right like it's one thing to whoa it's one thing to be guys that was literally a policeman driving yo, things are crazy what is happening the light was red and he is full on going through the light just not even thinking like it's just wild to me that that was his decision okay but anyway um but yeah it's creating an environment where people are empowered uh in this light work that is also um something that we have to consider you know um because for me i didn't realize 